So a couple of days ago over on my Facebook page, I posted an image of a dagger that I um, put together where it looks like it's kind of flying through the air and has uh, this kind of cool tracer effect coming off of it. And I actually created that using the Repose feature in Photoshop CS5 Extended in a rather interesting way. So wasn't actually planning on doing a tutorial on it. It was just kind of a cool thing that, uh, that I had uh, come up with. But uh, a lot of people were asking for it, so thought I'd go ahead and show you how to go ahead and create that using Photoshop CS5 Extended's Repousse feature. So it starts with a basic image of a dagger. Here I've got this uh, regular stock image of this dagger that I'm going to use for this uh, effect. So I'm going to take it, and I've already extracted it from its background, so I'm just going to take it and drag and drop it over to my working document here. And what I want to do is actually position it where I want it to be in its final position uh, in, the, in the finished image here. So I actually want it to be kind of tilted as if it was thrown across the image here and it's about to stick in the, like if this was a wall on the other side or something like that. So I want it to almost like, almost like it's about to finish its spin and stick right there. So and I want to see the trails just kind of going off to the side here all the way to the edge of the document. So with it in its final position, I'm going to go ahead and load this layer as an active selection. I'm just going to hold down the command key on Mac, control on Windows, and then click right on the object, loads it as an active selection. And then we'll go under 3D, uh, the 3D menu down here to Repose, and choose Current Selection. And what it's going to do is go ahead and apply an extrusion to the graphic element and open up the Repose panel. Now inside here you can see it's gone ahead and applied a little bit of an extrusion to the um, dagger element, but I'm going to go ahead and increase it here in the extrude section where it says depth. We're going to take that and go ahead and push it all the way up to its highest setting to 10. And if I rotate the graphic around, you can see it's really got a long extrusion on there now. So now what we're going to do is really put a twist on this, quite literally. So we're going to go under the under the depth setting here, and you see where it says twist. And for that, we're going to go ahead and change it to negative 350. And you can see now it's twisting the extrusion as it goes back in space. Now it looks a little bit jagged around the edges there, and that's because of the quality setting we're using. By default, in here in the scene settings, at the very bottom, you've got the mesh quality menu. By default, it is set to draft. Let's go ahead and change that to best, and you'll see those edges go and go much smoother. So there we go. So we're looking a lot smoother there. Now, it's twisting right. Everything looks good. The problem is that it is extruding back in space and extruding away from the actual dagger itself. I want it to actually be to the side of the dagger. Well, if I turn the element so we see the twisting, the problem in here is that the dagger is no longer seen. It's actually facing the um, to the side, and we can't see it. So we actually need to skew the extrusion so we can still see the graphic. So let's bring it back to the home position. And all you need to do is go down here and select Shear, and then go into the X angle, and we'll set this to negative 88. Now, of course, if I was going to the right side of the dagger, then I would do it in just the positive. But and since we're going on the left side here, it's going to be a negative number. And there you can see that the wave is kind of going off to the side here, and we can see the, the, the dagger right there. So that's all we need to do here in the Repousse panel, is set the depth to 10, twist to negative 350, and the um, shear angle to negative 88. So go ahead and click OK there. And there we see the trails coming off. Well, it doesn't look like trails yet. It just looks like a solid shape that's kind of coming off to the, the side of the uh, dagger there. So what we need to do is actually mask this extruded element here. But the first thing we need to do is actually give it a color fill. If you go into the layers panel and see that there is a these two texture sublayers attached to the 3D layer. One is for the extruded element and then the other is for the actual face of the dagger element itself. So just to show you, if I double click on layer one there you can see it opens up the document with the dagger in its position as it should be. Now what I'm going to do in this document is go ahead and create a new blank layer underneath that active layer or underneath the dagger that contains, or the layer that contains the dagger and fill that with black. And what this is going to do, I'm going to go ahead and close the document and save the changes. It's going to clean up the uh, little halo edge we have around the dagger here. And you'll see actually that disappear. If I do a before and after you can see it's cleaned up that edge quite a bit. It's a subtle change but it does make a little bit of a difference there. So 
With that, we now have the layer one extrusion material. If I double click on that, it will open up a separate document and you can see it has no color fill at all. This we're gonna go ahead and fill with white. So I'm gonna go ahead and press shift delete and we'll use white, normal, 100% and click okay. Close this document and save the changes. And then you can see the extruded area will change to white, there it goes. Now in order to see the trails like we want, we're gonna need to create a masked element here. So let's open up the 3D panel and we're gonna need to go over into the third icon over here at the top, which is the material section. And we need to highlight the extrusion material. We can modify each surface of this 3D object individually. We've got the front, back, front bevel, back bevel, and the extrusion material, which is what we want. So highlight layer one extrusion. And then we'll go down here and we're gonna add an opacity file. Now the size you need to create this document is gonna be based on the layer extrusion material itself. So if I go over here and double click on that extrusion material, once again, and this is the file we just filled with white, I'm just gonna go over here and do a select all and copy to the clipboard. Now we'll copy that graphic element size to my clipboard. So when I go into that opacity setting, again, we're selected on the extrusion material here in the material section of the 3D panel go down here to the opacity and then click on the folder and choose new texture. It will remember that document size, which is roughly 14 inches. And then we'll go ahead and click okay. So it's gonna create that document as an opacity file. Now an opacity file in 3D terms works very much the same way as a layer mask. White will reveal everything on the layer, black will hide, and then gray will show transparency. So let's go into that opacity file and open it up. It's gonna open up a separate document. Now we're gonna actually use the dagger graphic itself to create the mask. So let's go back to that file containing the dagger and go ahead and take that and drag and drop it into this mask file. Now the first thing is I don't need the color element of this graphic. So let's go under image adjustments and then choose desaturate. Now after some trial and error, I know that this file, the way it corresponds in the mask graphic is if over here, the top edge of my mask document here is the edge next to the dagger itself. And the bottom is the other end way over here off to the side. And the, um, the sides here of this document are the top and bottom edge of the graphic element. So knowing that, we're actually going to use the dagger to create the mask. Again, let's go ahead and scale it so it is touching the edges of the file at both ends. Here we go, it's like that. Doesn't have to be super perfect, just make sure it gets close enough. And I'm gonna use just a sliver of this graphic. So if I zoom in here, and we're gonna take the rectangular marquee tool and just draw a very tiny selection along the full length of this dagger element, very small, narrow selection right along that element there, just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and press Command J and copy that selected area to its own layer. So it's got a little strip of that graphic. So I'm gonna take that element and drag it to the very top of the file. Let's drag it up there. And then we'll just go ahead and put it in free transform. Go to edit, transform, or that's just, I'll just choose free transform and then grab that top middle handle and drag it down to stretch the graphic top to bottom. So we got a nice streaky element there. So I'm gonna turn that layer off and actually go ahead and make my background layer black. So I'm just gonna press Option Delete, fills that layer in. Gonna put a layer mask on this graphic element, the streaky element here, and then just mask the bottom. Remember, we want it to fade to nothing. So we'll have the bottom fade to black and some of these white area up top is a little too much. So I'm actually gonna drop the overall opacity of this layer to around 40. So it's a little bit light, but not too bright. So I think that's all we're gonna do. And this is our mask file. So when I close this document and save the changes, watch what happens to the streaky element. Now it's gonna look a little rough because it's not rendered, but when it comes back, you can see there are the streaks coming off of the edge of the knife. Now go on ahead and jump ahead and have a file here that's got it more finished. But it's the same element. We've got those same streaks that are visible and all I've gone ahead and done here is added a blue gradient, very subtle blue gradient underneath it. 
And there you can see the knife is that much more pronounced. We can see the trails just kind of floating off. In fact, if I take that whole graphic element or that 3D element and slide it across the document here, you can see it where it fades to nothing. And that's that mask file where it fades to black is it fades to nothing here in the finished document. Now, one more element to add here and to finish us off is... Now, of course, when you come back out of that, and one thing I failed to mention here, when you come back out of the mask file and it looks a little rough like this, and it, to get it to look smooth like you're looking at right here, you need to actually render it. So you'll need to go into the 3D panel once again and then select the very first icon down here in the middle, go to the quality menu and choose Ray Trace Draft or Ray Trace Final if you are if you think it's going to be the final, um, the last time you render it. But it, definitely choose Ray Trace Draft. It'll give you a, a good idea of how it's going to look. And then there we have it. Now, like I said, one more element to add here. I'm going to open up the document containing the dagger file right here. And then we're going to take that dagger and again, drag and drop it back inside of the file. So I'm going to position that below the 3D layer, and let's go ahead and scale it to fit in here. And what I, what, what I want this to be is just little tiny blurs almost, as if the, to give the dagger more of a sense of movement. So I'm just going to position it right here and then go ahead and drop its opacity down to about like 40%. And then I'm going to drag another duplicate over just a little bit, and once again tilt it. So it really kind of gives a sense of motion and a sense of direction uh, as to how this thing is flying through the air. In fact, I'm going to do one last one here. And again, I'm just making duplicate layers, sliding it over a little bit, giving a little bit of a tilt. And this implies the turning that it's doing as it's flying through the air very subtly. It's just kind of like gliding through there and it's kind of, it's kind of shows that movement. It doesn't necessarily need it, but it does add a little bit more to it to give it more of a sense of movement. It's this sense of really flying through the air like that. But there it is, an interesting way of using Repousse, <coughs> excuse me, using Repousse in a way it wasn't necessarily meant to, but by creating a mask file and masking that extrusion in a, in a very interesting way can give you what looks like really cool tracer effect flying right off the dagger. Pretty neat, huh?